Oh, nothing to worry about, little kitty. You are as cool as a cucumber. And how can you tell that? Well, to know that, we need to step into the world of the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Zoom in! Have you ever wondered why thermometers work or how we know two things are the same temperature? The answer lies in thermodynamics from the Greek therm, heat and dynamis, power. Together they describe the science of how heat, energy and work interact. Basically, why ice melts, why engines run and why your hot chocolate eventually cools down. Now, scientists already had the first, second and third laws of thermodynamics to describe how energy moves. And these laws mentioned temperature constantly, as if its meaning were already obvious. The problem? Temperature still lacked a solid scientific definition. It was like building a house on an unchecked foundation. You can do it, but eventually things start to wobble. To fix this, physicists needed a clearer universal definition of temperature. Something solid enough to justify using thermometers and precise heat measurements. That's where the zeroth law came in. In the 1930s, British physicist Ralph H. Fowler realized this principle was so fundamental that it belonged before the other laws, even though it was formulated later. Since he couldn't call it the law before the first law, he named it the zeroth law. So, what does the zeroth law actually say? It's pretty simple. If object A is in the thermal equilibrium with object B, and object B is in thermal equilibrium with object C, then object A must also be in thermal equilibrium with object C. Think of it like this. If Joe and Mo are both exactly as tall as Louis, then Joe and Mo must also be the same height. It's obvious but incredibly important. Of course, height is just an analogy. In thermodynamics, the shared property is temperature. And we figure that out by checking whether heat is still moving between objects. That's where thermal equilibrium comes in. It simply means two objects have stopped exchanging heat. No more heat flowing back and forth. So they must be at the same temperature. Suppose you put a cold metal spoon into a bowl of hot soup. At first, heat moves up from the soup into the spoon, warming it up. After a bit of time, the spoon stops getting warmer. The heat flow stops. At this point, they are in thermal equilibrium, which means they've reached the same temperature. This is the zeroth law in action. And this is exactly why thermometers work. When you place a thermometer under your tongue, it gradually warms up until no more heat flows between it and your body. That moment is thermal equilibrium. Thanks to the zero law, we know that the thermometer's temperature reading is actually your temperature, not something random. Without the zero law, Temperature wouldn't be a reliable idea at all. Every measurement would be a guess and the rest of thermodynamics would fall apart. Instead, this simple but powerful rule helps keep everything from your fridge to stars in the sky 
scientifically understandable. Trivia time! Did you know Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit was the first person to build reliable glass thermometers using alcohol and mercury back in the early 1700s. Also, the United States is one of the few countries that still uses Fahrenheit for everyday temperatures. Most of the world switched to Celsius. Sketching time! Today's sketch of the day goes to Lincoln John. Hope you learned something solid today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. So, little kitty, ready for school? Hmm, exactly as cold as the cold coffee on the table. Perfect! Then tell the teacher, Kitty has a cold. Uh-oh, never mind. <laughs>